Chapter One of Book One The Less of Metaphysics by Aristotle. Translated by John McMahon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Geoffrey Edwards. Chapter One Speculation respecting truth is partly difficult and partly easy, and a proof is the following that in the pursuit of truth neither is any one philosopher in a way worthy of the dignity of the subject able to attain this nor can all investigators fail in reaching it but that each says something to the point concerning nature and individually that indeed they add nothing or but little to this speculation respecting truth but from all these collected together that there ensues something of magnitude wherefore if indeed it so seems to be the case as we happen to say in the proverb quote, who will miss the door close quote, in this way truly would the speculation of truth be easy but for philosophers to have a certain whole and not to be able to have each some portion indicates the difficulty of it and perhaps also from the fact that the difficulty arises in two ways the cause of this may not be so much in things themselves as in us for as the eyes of bats are to the light that follows the dawn of day so also is the mind of our soul to those things which above all are naturally the most splendid but not only is it just to return thanks to those whose opinions one may have fellowship with but also to those moreover who have enunciated their sentiments more superficially for even these likewise contribute something for they have previously exercised our speculative habit for if there had not been a timotheus we would not have had much melody and unless there had been a Prinus, there would not have been such a person as timotheus but in the same manner also it is in the case of those who have declared their sentiments concerning truth for indeed from some of them we have inherited certain opinions but others have been the causes of these becoming opinions of theirs but it is correct also that philosophy should be styled a science speculative of truth for of speculative science the end is truth but of practical science a work for even though they may examine how a thing is practical men do not investigate into the cause of that thing in itself but in relation to something else and as connected with the present time but we do not know the truth without the knowledge of cause but especially is each thing that amongst other things according to which also there subsists in other things that which is synonymous as for example fire is a thing most hot for also in the rest of entities is this a cause of their heat wherefore also most true is that which is a cause to posterior natures of their being true wherefore is it necessary that the first principles of things always existing should always be most true for not sometimes are they true neither is anything the cause of being to those but those are the causes of being in other things wherefore as each thing is disposed in regard of existence so also is it in regard of truth chapter two but truly that there is at least some first principle and that the causes of entities are not infinite either in a progress in a straightforward direction or according to form is evident for neither as of matter is it possible that this particular entity proceed from this to infinity for instance flesh indeed from earth and earth from air and air from fire and this without ever coming to a standstill nor can there an infinite progression take place with the origin of the principle of motion as for instance that man should have been moved by the air and this by the sun and the sun by discord and of this that there should be no end nor in like manner can this infinite progression take place with the final cause that walking for instance should be gone through for the sake of health 
and this for the sake of enjoyment and this enjoyment for the sake of something else and similarly that one thing invariably should subsist on account of another and in like manner is it the case with the formal cause for of media to which externally there is something last and first it is necessary that what is first should be a cause of those things which are subsequent to it for if we must declare what is the cause of three things we will assert that it is the first of the three for doubtless it is not the last at least for that is not at any rate at the extremity of anything as a cause but truly neither is it the middle for this is the cause of one thing only but it makes no difference whether one or many media be assumed nor whether they are things infinite or finite but in this way all the portions of things infinite and of the infinite in general are similarly media up to the extremity so that if there is nothing that is the first there is in short no cause but neither truly is it possible as regards a progression downwards to proceed on to infinity in case that which is in a progression upwards involves a first principle as for example that from fire indeed water should be produced but from this earth and so invariably that a certain different genus be produced for in a twofold manner is one thing produced from another not as this particular thing is said to take place after that for example the olympic games from the isthmian either as a man is produced from a boy undergoing a change or air from water as indeed then we say that a man is produced from a boy as a thing that has been from that which is in a process of formation or that which has been finished from that which is being finished or tends towards perfection for always is there a certain medium as production is a medium between existence and non-existence so also is the thing that is being produced between entity and non-entity and a person receiving instruction is one becoming scientifically learned and this is the meaning of what is affirmed that from a person learning is produced one that is scientifically learned and just as water is generated from air on account of the air having undergone corruption wherefore in the former instance the things adduced indeed do not revert into one another nor is a child produced from a man for that which is being produced does not arise from the act of generation but is subsequent to generation for so also the day is generated from the dawn because it is posterior to this wherefore neither is the dawn generated from the day but the other instances revert into each other in both these cases however it is impossible to pursue the progress on to infinity for in the one case of those that are media there must needs be an end and in the other case the things adduced revert into one another for the destruction of one is the generation of the other but at the same time also it is impossible that what is first seeing that it is eternal should be subject to corruption for since generation is not infinite in an ascending progression that nature must needs not be eternal from which anything has been produced as from that which is primary and has been subject to corruption but this is impossible further the final cause is an end but a thing of this sort is that which does not subsist on account of another but other things on account of that wherefore if that which is last be a thing of this sort there will not be a progression to infinity but if there is no such thing i mean that which is last the final cause will have no existence but they who introduce this infinite progression forget that they destroy the nature of the good although no one would undertake entering on any course of action not intending to go on to a termination of his undertaking nor would there be design in such things for one who is possessed of mind always does a thing for some purpose or other for this is a termination for it for the end proposed is a termination but indeed neither can the formal cause admit of being referred to another definition more copious in reason 
for the prior definition is invariably more the definition of a thing but the subsequent is not so but to that of which there is no first neither has that which is next in order any existence further they destroy scientific knowledge who make assertions in this way for it is not even possible to understand anything before we come to individual things and scientific knowledge has no existence in this case for things infinite in this manner how is it possible to apprehend for the infinite here is not a thing similar to infinity in the case of a line which as regards its divisions indeed does not come to a standstill but is indivisible nor is it possible for one to apprehend these divisions except he imposes some limit to their divisibility wherefore he will not reckon the divisions or sections who goes through the infinite in detail but also as regards the matter so far as it is such in what is being moved it is necessary to understand it thus far and for nothing that is infinite is there any possibility of existence but if this is not the case not infinite at any rate is that by which we may know the infinite but doubtless if the species of causes were infinite in number neither in such a case would the perception of our knowledge be possible for then we think we know when we may make known the causes but the infinite according to addition it is not in finite duration possible to exhaust chapter three but lectures on philosophic subjects fall out according to our habits for as we have been accustomed so we deem it right a thing should be expressed and whatever things are besides these do not appear similar but from the fact of our not being habituated thereto they seem more unknown and strange for the habitual is more known and how great force the habitual possesses the laws make manifest in which fabulous and puerile things have greater force from usage than the reality of our knowledge concerning them but some persons indeed do not admit those making assertions unless one speaks with mathematical precision but others do not approve of what is said unless they express themselves by means of an exemplar and others think it right to adduce a poet as a witness and some require all things to be expressed with accuracy whereas accuracy is troublesome to others either on account of their not being able to carry on a train of reasoning or on account of their considering such as mere quibbling about verbal niceties for the precise involves some such thing wherefore as in the case of contracts so also in that of philosophic discourses precision seems to be a thing to some persons that is illiberal wherefore it is necessary that one should have been instructed what way we must admit each and all points of inquiry as it would be absurd at the same time to seek for scientific knowledge and the mode of attaining such knowledge but it is not easy to acquire either of these now mathematical accuracy of language is not to be required in all things but in those things that do not involve any connection with matter wherefore such is not the natural mode of discovering truth for perhaps the whole of nature involves matter therefore first must we investigate what nature is for in this way also will it be evident about what only natural science is conversant and whether it is the province of one science or of many to speculate into causes and first principles end of chapter three and end of book one the less recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter one of book two of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter one 
for the advancement of the science under investigation it is necessary for us first to take a review of those points respecting which one ought to doubt in the first instance but these are whatsoever subjects some speculators have entertained opinions of after a different mode and whatever beyond these may happen to have been overlooked for it will contribute towards one's object who wishes to acquire a facility in the gaining of knowledge to doubt judiciously for a subsequent acquisition in the way of knowledge is the solution of previous doubts but when one is ignorant of the bond of a thing it is not possible for such to lose it but the perplexity of the intellect makes manifest this assertion respecting the matter in hand for so far forth as the dianoetic faculty doubts so far does it undergo something similar to persons loaded with chains for it is impossible in both cases to advance further wherefore it is necessary in the first instance to speculate into all the difficulties involved in the present subject both on account of these things and also from the fact that they who carry on an investigation without doubting first are similar to persons ignorant where they ought to walk and in addition to these things neither can such know whether he has discovered the object of his speculation or not for the end is not manifest to this speculator but to one who has previously doubted in a judicious way it is manifest but further there is a necessity that a person should be better qualified for forming a judgment who has heard all the reasons as it were of adversaries and opposing disputants now the first source of perplexity is concerning those things which we have expressed doubts of in our preface namely whether to speculate into causes be the province of one or many sciences and whether it be the province of this science to discover merely the primary principles of substance or also to speculate concerning the first principles from which all derive their demonstrations as for instance whether it is possible to affirm and deny one and the same thing at the same time or not and concerning the other things of such a kind and if it is the province of this science to be conversant about substance whether one may be about all or whether there be many such in existence and if many whether all are akin to each other or it may be proper to style some of them sciences of quotes, wisdom and others of them something else and this very thing is amongst the necessary points of investigation whether it should be affirmed that sensible substances exist only or whether others also subsist in addition to these and whether there is a genus singly or a number of genera of substances according to the opinion of those who introduce both forms and mathematical entities as things intermediate between these and sensibles concerning these therefore as we have said an examination must be made and also concerning substances whether the speculation extend only to them or to the essential accidents of these substances but in addition to these points we might inquire in regard of sameness and diversity and similarity and dissimilarity and identity and contrariety and concerning priority and subsequence and all the rest of such things concerning as many as the dialecticians endeavour to examine instituting their inquiries from matters merely of opinion we might i say investigate whose province it is to speculate into all of these further may one investigate whatsoever things are essential accidents in these very things both not only what each of them is but also whether in truth one be contrary to one and whether genera are first principles and elements or those things into which as being inherent each thing is divided and if the genera are so whether they are such things as are predicated last or the first concerning individuals as for example whether animal or man be a first principle and be so rather than a singular 
but most especially must we investigate and examine with pains as to whether besides matter there is any absolute cause or not and whether this is separate or not and whether it be one or such causes may be many in number and whether there is anything beside entirety but i mean by entirety when anything has been predicated of matter or nothing or whether this is the case with some things indeed but not so with others and what sort of entities such are moreover whether first principles are limited in number or in species both those that subsist in formal causes and those that are in the subject and whether of things corruptible and incorruptible the principles be the same or different and whether all are incorruptible or whether of corruptible things there are corruptible principles moreover also the most difficult of all and involving the greatest perplexity is the inquiry whether unity and entity as the pythagoreans and plato used to affirm be not anything else but the substance of entities or this be not the case but that there be some other subject as empedocles says harmony is and a certain other philosopher fire and another water or air and whether first principles are universal or are as the singulars of things and whether they subsist in capacity or in energy further whether they subsist otherwise than according to motion for also these speculations would furnish much perplexity but in addition to these points there remains the inquiry whether numbers and dimensions and figures and points be certain substances or not and if they are substances whether they are capable of being separated from sensibles or be inherent in them for concerning all of these questions not only is it difficult successfully to attain unto the truth but neither is a judicious doubting easy for the reasoning faculties chapter two in the first place indeed therefore let us institute an inquiry concerning the first assertions which we have made namely whether to speculate concerning all kinds of causes be the province of one or many sciences for how would it be the province of a single science to take cognizance of existing first principles when they are not contrary to each other but further in the case of many of the entities all do not exist in all of them for in what way is it possible for the principle of motion to be found in things incapable of motion or that the nature of the good should if everything which may be essentially good and by reason of its own nature is an end and so a cause inasmuch as on account of that other things are both produced and exist but the end and the final cause are an end of any action and all things in the act of doing are attended with motion therefore in things incapable of motion it would not be possible that this should exist as the first principle or that there be therein any essential good wherefore also in mathematics nothing is demonstrated through this cause nor is there any demonstration for the reason that a thing is better or worse but neither does any mathematician make mention at all of any such thing whatsoever therefore for this reason certain of the sophists as for example aristippus regarded these sciences with disdain for in the other arts even the mechanical ones themselves as in those of carpentry and shoemaking he said that wherefore a thing is better or worse could be declared in every respect but that the mathematical sciences make no account concerning things good and evil but truly if there are at least many sciences of causes and different sciences of a different first principle which of these must be said to be the one under investigation or whom of those that are in possession of them shall we pronounce scientifically informed particularly in the matter under inquiry for in the same subject is it possible that all the modes of causes exist as for example of a house the origin of the principle of motion is from art and the builder and the final cause is the work but the matter is earth and stones 
and the form is the definition from the distinctions therefore laid down by us originally as to which of the sciences we ought to denominate wisdom is involved a reason for further styling each thus for as far as a science is most qualified for the pre-eminence and for superiority over the rest and so far as it is just that as servants the rest of the sciences should not contradict so far such is a science of the end and of the good for the rest of things are on account of this but as far as wisdom has been defined a science of first causes and of that which is especially capable of being scientifically known so far such would be a science of substance for seeing that persons may acquire the same knowledge by many methods we say that he rather understands a thing who makes known by its being what that thing is than by its not being and of these themselves one in preference to another and particularly he who knows what a thing is and not he who knows the quantity or the quality of a thing or what it is by nature fitted for in the way of action or of passion further in the case of other things the understanding each of those subjects concerning which there are demonstrations we think then to have an existence when we may understand what a thing is for instance what the squaring of a right-lined figure is that it is the finding of a mean proportional in like manner is it in the case of the rest but with regard to generations and actions and every kind of change we are in a way of understanding each when we understand the first principle of motion and this is different and in opposition to the end wherefore it would appear to belong to the department of a different science to investigate each of these causes but truly also with regard to demonstrative first principles whether they belong to one science or more is a question open to doubt but i term demonstrative even those common opinions from which all derive their demonstrations for instance that everything must needs be either an affirmation or negation and that it is impossible for the same thing to be and not to be at the same time and whatsoever other such propositions there are it is i say a question open to doubt whether there be one science of these and of substance or a different one and if not one whether it is necessary to denominate as such the science under investigation therefore it would not then appear reasonable indeed that it should be the province of one science for why in preference should the perception concerning these peculiarly belong to geometry rather than to any other science whatsoever if therefore in like manner truly it belongs to any whatsoever but it does not admit of belonging to all the sciences as neither is it the peculiarity of the rest so neither is it the province of that science which makes known the substances to investigate concerning these but at the same time also in what way will it be the science of these for what each of these happens to be we also now know the rest of the arts therefore employ them as things known but if there be a demonstrative science concerning them it will be necessary that there be a certain subject genus and that some of these indeed should be passive properties and others axioms for concerning all things it is impossible that there should be a demonstration for demonstration must needs be composed of certain principles and be conversant respecting some thing and the demonstration of some things wherefore it happens that there is one particular genus of all things that are being demonstrated for all the demonstrative sciences employ axioms but truly if there be a science on substance different from the one concerning these which of them is by nature fitted to be more sovereign and prior for especially and universally the principles of all things are the axioms and if this is not the part of the philosopher whose else will it be to speculate into the truth and falsehood regarding these and upon the whole whether of all substances is there one science or more if indeed therefore there is not one science of such what sort of substance must we consider as the subject matter of this science of ontology 
but that there should be one science of all substances is not reasonable for there would be one demonstrative science concerning all things that are essential accidents if every demonstrative science in respect of a certain subject speculates into essential accidents from general opinions respecting them the same genus it is the province of the same science to investigate the essential accidents from these same general opinions for an examination respecting the wherefore belongs to one science and to one respecting those elements whereof a thing consists whether both investigations belong to the same or a different science wherefore the like will take place in regard of accidents whether these will investigate them or one of those but further might we examine whether the speculation is confined only to substances or is also concerning the accidents in these but i say for example if a solid be a certain substance and lines and surfaces whether it be the province of the same science to take cognizance of these things and of the accidents of each genus about which the mathematical sciences demonstrate or if it be the province of a different one for if indeed of the same there would be a certain demonstrative science and that the science of substance but of the essence or formal cause there does not appear to be a demonstration but if of a different science what will be the science that speculates about the accidents of substance for this would be altogether difficult to render an account of further also whether must we say that there are sensible substances only or also besides these others and whether do the genera of these substances happen to subsist singly or are they more numerous as for instance they who speak both of forms and media between forms and things sensible concerning which they say are conversant the mathematical sciences as to the assertion then indeed that we have made namely that forms are causes and substances absolutely subsisting it has been declared in the earliest of our disquisitions concerning these but as these inquiries in many ways are clogged with difficulties it would be no less absurd the assertion that there are indeed certain natures besides those which are in the heavens and that these are the same with things sensible except that the former are indeed eternal and the latter corruptible for they speak of the existence of ideal man and ideal horse and ideal health but say nothing else in regard of these acting in a way similar to those who affirm the existence of the gods no doubt but in the shape of men for neither did these latter constitute aught save eternal men nor do the former make species anything else but eternal sensibles but further if in addition also to forms and sensibles any will set down things intermediate he will be involved in many doubts for it is evident that in like manner there will be lines and each of the other genera besides also them that are sensible wherefore since astrology is one of these there will also be a certain heaven besides the sensible heaven and a certain other sun and moon and so with the rest in like manner of the bodies that are situated in the heavens although how need one place confidence in such statements as these for neither is it reasonable that this ideal heaven should be incapable of motion but also that it should be capable of motion is altogether impossible in like manner also is it the case concerning the objects whereof optical science treats and that of harmonics in mathematics for also it is impossible that these should have a subsistence different from sensibles through the same causes for if things sensible and senses have an intermediate subsistence it is manifest also that there will be animals which will be media between them and things corruptible but one would doubt also concerning what sort of entities it is necessary for these sciences to investigate 
for if geodesy will differ from geometry in this only that one is conversant about things which we perceive by the senses but the other about things that are not cognizant by sense it is manifest that besides the medicinal science and besides each of the rest there will be a certain science intermediate between the healing art itself and this particular art of medicine although indeed how is this possible for also would there be in such a case certain salubrious qualities in addition to those that are sensible and to the salubrious itself but at the same time neither is this true that geodesy is conversant about sensible magnitudes and those that are corruptible for it would fall into decay when they were in process of being destroyed but truly neither will astronomy be conversant about sensible magnitude nor about yon heaven for neither are the lines that fall under the cognizance of the senses the same as the geometrician describes them for not of the things that are perceived by the senses is in this way strictly straight or round for the circle touches the rule not in a point but as protagoras was accustomed to say in his refutation of the geometricians neither are the motions and the evolutions of the heavens similar to those about which astrology has formed its systems nor have the symbols the same nature with the stars but there are some persons who say that these reputed media between forms and sensibles are not indeed separable from sensibles at least but inherent in them and to enumerate all the impossibilities attendant upon these statements would require a more copious discourse but even it will be sufficient to speculate thus much on this point for neither is it reasonable that this should be so in the case of these merely but it is evident that it would be possible also for forms to subsist in sensibles for both of these are results of the same process of reasoning but further must there needs be two solids in the same place and these mathematical entities must needs not be things incapable of motion seeing that they at least subsist in sensibles that are being moved and in short on what account will any one lay down their having a subsistence indeed and a subsistence in sensibles for the same absurdities with the things that have been previously spoken will ensue for there will be a certain heaven in addition to the heaven we see except that it will not be separate but in the same place which is still more absurd chapter three now respecting these points much doubt therefore prevails namely how it is necessary by forming one's opinion thereupon to attain unto the truth and likewise respecting first principles whether it is requisite to consider the genera as elements and first principles or in preference those things from which as inherent each first thing consists as for example the elements and first principles of voice appear to be those things from which all voices are composed primarily but not the voice in common and we say that those things are elements of figures the demonstrations of which are inherent in the demonstrations either of all or of the greater part of other things but further both some in affirming that there are many elements of bodies and others that there is one of which they are composed and from which they consist assert these to be the first principles as for example empedocles asserts that fire and water and the elements subsisting along with these are those from which as being inherent entities derive their existence but he does not speak of these as the genera of entities and in addition to these statements we may subjoin the remark that if any one wishes to contemplate the nature of the rest of things as for example a bed of what parts it consists and how those parts are put together in that case he is acquainted with the nature of it from these reasons therefore it would appear that first principles would not be the genera of entities but so far forth as we obtain a knowledge of each thing by means of the definition and so far as first principles are the genera of definitions it is necessary also that first principles be the genera of things capable of definition 
and likewise if to acquire the science of the forms according to which entities are denominated is to acquire the science of entities themselves in this case the genera of the forms are first principles but those also who affirm that the elements of entities are unity or entity or the great and the little appear to employ these as genera but neither truly in both cases is it possible at least to affirm also that they are first principles for indeed of substance there is one reason or formal principle different however will be the definition through the genera and that which declares the entities whereof as inherent a thing consists if also most especially in addition to these things the genera are first principles whether is it necessary to regard the first of the genera to be principles or the lowest that are predicated of individuals for this also is involved in doubt for if indeed it is requisite that universals are first principles in a more eminent degree it is evident that the topmost genera will be first principles for these are predicated of all things therefore the first principles of entities will be as numerous as the first genera so that unity and entity will be first principles and substances for these especially are predicated of all entities but it is not possible that there should be one genus of entities or that unity or entity should be such for it is necessary indeed that the differences of each genus both exist and that each should be one but it is impossible either for the species to be predicated about the proper differences of the genus or for the genus to subsist independent of the species of itself wherefore if unity or entity be a genus neither will entity or unity constitute any difference but doubtless unless there be genera there will not be first principles since genera are first principles further also media that are comprehended along with the differences will be genera as far as to individuals but now this appears to be the case with some and not with others and further in addition to these things we may add that the differences are rather first principles than the genera but if these also are first principles first principles become infinite so to speak and this is especially the case if one should constitute the first genus a first principle but truly if also the one rather be that which is principal and if one be a thing that is indivisible and everything that is indivisible is so either according to quantity or according to species and if that which is according to species have a prior subsistence and the genera are more divisible into species one would be predicated last for man is not a genus of certain particular men further of those things wherein the prior and subsequent are inherent it is not possible that what is predicated of them would be anything different from these for instance if a duad be the first of numbers there will not be any number different from the species of numbers and in like manner rather will there be figures in addition to the species of figures but if this is not the case in regard of these hardly at least will there be genera of other things in addition to the species for of these there seem especially to be genera but in individuals there is not one thing that is prior and another that is subsequent further where one thing is better and another worse that which is better always is prior so that none of these could be a genus from these statements indeed therefore it appears that those things that are predicated of individuals are first principles rather than the genera but again how on the other hand it is necessary to regard these as first principles it would not be easy to express for it is requisite that there should be a first principle and a cause exclusive of the things of which there is a first principle and that it should be capable of subsisting in a condition of separation therefrom but as to the existence of some such thing besides the singular why should one make a supposition to this effect except that it is predicated universally and of all things 
but if indeed this is done on this account in such a case universals are to be set down as first principles in a more eminent degree so that the first genera would be principles end of chapter three recording in memory of mitchell edwards Chapter four of book two of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter four but a doubt closely connected with the foregoing is one which of all is both the most difficult and the most requisite to examine into concerning which our treatise at present is immediately occupied for if there is not anything besides singulars and if singulars are infinite how is it possible to be in possession of a science of things that are infinite for as far as there is something that is one and the same and as far as there is something that is universal so far do we attain a knowledge of all things but doubtless if this be necessary and if there must needs be something in addition to singulars it would be requisite that there be genera in addition to singulars whether they are the lowest or the highest but that this is impossible we have ourselves just now expressed a doubt but further if most especially there is something besides the entire when anything has been predicated concerning matter whether if there be a certain form must there needs be something universal in addition to some and not in addition to other things or is there nothing universal besides singulars if then there is nothing universal besides singulars there would not be anything that is cognizable by the mind but all things would fall beneath the notice of the senses and there would not be a scientific knowledge of anything unless one would assert the exercise of the senses to be science further would there be nothing eternal or immovable for all things sensible are in a process of corruption and are in motion but truly if there is at least nothing that is eternal neither is it a thing possible that there should be generation for there must needs be something namely that which is being produced and wherefrom it is produced and of these the last must be ingenerable if both the progress of successive productions is to stop at all and if generation from non-entity should be a thing that is impossible but moreover on the supposition of such things being in existence as generation and motion there must needs be a limit likewise for neither is any motion infinite but of every motion is there an end but that cannot be produced which it is impossible could have been produced but that which has been produced must needs exist when first it has been produced but further if matter be an existence from the fact of its being ingenerable still it is much more reasonable that substance should have a subsistence when that is generated so as to have a being for if neither substance nor matter shall have an existence neither will there be anything at all in existence but if this be impossible there must needs be something in addition to the entire namely the form and species yet if on the other hand any one will establish this dogma a doubt presents itself both in the case of what things one should make this assertion and in the case of what one should not for that this is not possible in the case of all is evident for we would not posit existence of any particular house in addition to certain houses but in addition to the foregoing points we may subjoin the inquiry whether will there be one substance of all things for instance of men now this is absurd for all things are not one of which the substance is one but are many and different this however also is an unreasonable statement and at the same time also how would matter become each of these and how is the entire both of these but further respecting first principles we would also entertain this particular doubt for if indeed they are one in species not will there be that is one in number 
nor will actual unity or entity have any existence and how would scientific knowledge be in existence unless there was a certain one in all things but truly if they are one in number each of the first principles also will be one and not as in the case of sensibles one principle of one thing and another of another as for instance of this syllable when it is the same in species the first principles also are the same in species for these likewise are different in number and if this be not the case but if the first principles of entities are one in number there will not be in existence anything else besides the elements for to speak of one in number or of the singular makes no difference for so we speak of the singular as one in number and of the universal as that which is common to these just therefore does the case stand as if the elements of voice should be limited in number all the letters necessarily must be in number as many as the elements since neither two nor more than two of them would be the same section one but a doubt of no less difficulty has been overlooked both by modern investigators and by our predecessors namely as to whether the first principles of things corruptible and of things incorruptible be the same or different for if indeed they are the same how is it the case that some things are incorruptible and others corruptible and from what cause does this difference arise those of the hesiodic school and all as many as are theologians fix their thoughts only upon the probable as it appeared to themselves but they have treated us with disdain for seeing that they make the first principles gods and to have been produced from gods whatsoever did not taste of the nectar and ambrosia they say are mortal palpably speaking of these denominations as expressive of things that are known to themselves respecting however the actual adducing of these causes they have spoken beyond our comprehension for if indeed the immortals partake of these for the sake of pleasure the nectar and ambrosia are in no respect the causes of their existence and if these are the causes of their existence how would they be eternal when thus requiring sustenance but respecting those fabulous systems of philosophy it is not worth one's while considering them with seriousness but from those who make assertions by demonstration it is necessary to ascertain in our inquiries why forsooth if entities are from the same source some of them are in their nature eternal and why others of these entities are subject to decay but inasmuch as they neither mention a cause of this and as it is not reasonable that the case should be so it is manifest that the first principles of these would not be the same nor would there be the same causes of them for also one whom any person would suppose to speak particularly consistent with himself namely empedocles has likewise experienced the same difficulty for he indeed is for establishing discord which is a first principle in his system as a certain cause of corruption nevertheless this would seem however also to produce entities that are beyond the one for from this are produced all the other works of creation except the deity the following at least are the words of empedocles quote, from which are all things as many as were and are and shall be after and trees therefrom have blossomed and men and women and beasts and birds and water-fed fishes and even the long-lived gods and the subsistence of all things independent of these is manifest for unless discord were inherent in things all things would have been one as he says for when they would have come together then last in the conglomeration would stand discord wherefore also it happens to him in his system that the deity who is supremely happy should be less prudent than the rest of beings for he does not know all the elements for he is not in possession of discord but the knowledge of the like is through the like Quote, for indeed says he by earth we see earth and by water water and ether divine by ether 
and through fire the ruinous fire and by concord concord and by gloomy discord discord Close quote. but to return to the point from whence our discourse digressed this at all events is evident that it happens according to the theory of empedocles that discord is no more the cause of corruption than of existence and in like manner that neither is harmony a cause of existence more than of corruption for while collecting things into unity it is a cause of corruption to other things and at the same time also he mentions no cause of the actual transmutation save that the thing is thus constituted by nature to take place mark his words quote, but when mighty discord was nourished in the members and rose up to the honours of deified time who holding the sway over them alternately had in the end surpassed the ample objects of god's adjuration Close quote. as if indeed it were a thing necessary that a change should take place but he does not bring to light any necessary cause but nevertheless thus much at least he only asserts consistently for he does not constitute some entities corruptible and others incorruptible but all corruptible except the elements but the source of perplexity now mentioned is this why if entities spring from the same source some of them are incorruptible and some of them are not so that therefore the first principles of things would not be the same let this much suffice to have been spoken but if the first principles of things be different one matter of doubt indeed is whether these also will be incorruptible or corruptible for if indeed they are corruptible it is manifest that it is requisite that these also should spring from certain entities for all things perish into those from whence they derive their being wherefore it happens that to principles there are other first principles that are prior but this is impossible both on the supposition of the progression being stationary at some stage of its progress and on the supposition of its going on to infinity and moreover how will things perishable subsist if the first principles will be destroyed but if these principles are imperishable why indeed from these that are things imperishable will arise those that are perishable but from the others those that are imperishable for this is not reasonable but either is impossible or requires for its establishment much rational support and further neither has any one attempted to enumerate different ones but speculators assign the same first principles of all things the first subject of doubt however they entertain slightly regarding it as something trifling section two but also the most difficult point of all to examine into and the most necessary for the discovery of truth is whether entity and unity are substances of entities and whether each of them not being anything else this is unity and that is entity or whether it is necessary to investigate what at length unity and entity are as if another nature were the subject to these for some truly in that way and some in this suppose their nature to be disposed for plato indeed and the pythagoreans do not regard entity as anything different from unity but that this is their nature that it should be the same thing for the substance to be one and to be a certain entity but amongst natural philosophers empedocles for instance as if conducting the inquiry to that which is more known says that unity is entity for he would seem to affirm that this is harmony at least this is a cause in his system of unity being found in all things but others say that fire and some that air is this unity and entity from whence that entities both arise and are produced so in like manner is it the case also with those who lay down the existence of more elements than these 
for it is likewise necessary for these to reckon unity and entity such things as whatever at least they affirm first principles to be but it happens unless one will set down the existence of unity and entity as a certain substance that not any of the rest of the universals will have any subsistence for these are universal pre-eminently above all but if unity itself be not some particular thing nor entity itself much less will there be any of the other things that will have a subsistence except those denominated singulars but further on the supposition of unity not being a substance it is evident that neither would number have a subsistence as a certain nature that has been separated from entities for number constitutes the monad but the monad is the same as some certain unit but truly if at least actual unity and actual entity be a certain particular thing it is necessary that the substance of that thing be entity and unity for it is not any different thing that is universally predicated about them but these very same things but doubtless if actual entity and actual unity at least shall have any existence much doubt will arise how there will subsist anything different from these now i mean how there will be more entities in existence than one for anything different from entity has no existence wherefore according to the theory of parmenides it must needs happen that all entities are one and that this one constitutes entity but in both cases there is a difficulty for even on the supposition whether unity doubtless be not substance or whether any actual unity have a subsistence it is impossible for number to be substance but if indeed then it has not a subsistence it hath been previously stated why but if it has the same doubt presents itself respecting entity also for from what will there be another one besides the one itself for must not that necessarily be not one for all entities are either one or many each of which is one further if unity itself be indivisible according indeed to the axiom of zeno nothing would there be having a subsistence for that which neither when added nor subtracted makes anything greater or less he affirms this not to belong to the category of entities because entity is manifestly magnitude and if it is magnitude it is corporeal for this in every way is entity but the addition of such things in one way will make what is greater and in another will not make anything so at all as a surface and a line make that which is greater but a point and a monad by no means have this effect but since this philosopher speculates clumsily and it happens that there is something that is indivisible wherefore even in this way also hath one for him a certain reply as follows an addition of this sort will not make a thing greater but will make it more yet how forsooth from one or more than one of this kind will arise magnitude for this is even like saying that a line is made up of points but doubtless if any one makes a supposition in this way so that as some say from actual unity and a something else that is not one is composed number not the less should it form a subject for investigation why and how what is produced will one time be number and another time magnitude if what is not one be inequality and the same nature for neither is it manifest how from one and this nature nor how from a certain number and this nature magnitudes would arise chapter five but a doubt connected with these is whether numbers and bodies and surfaces and points are certain substances or not for if they are not it eludes our comprehension what being is and what the substances of entities are for passive properties and motions and relations and dispositions and ratios do not appear to signify a substance of anything for all these are predicated respecting a certain subject and no one of them can be said to be this or that particular thing 
but things which would seem particularly to signify substance namely water and earth and fire from which compounded bodies consist the heats and colds of these and such like qualities are affections not substances but all the while the body which undergoes these passive conditions alone sustains them as a certain entity and as being a certain substance but truly both body is less substance than a superficies and this latter than a line and this than the monad and the point for by these is body defined and these indeed seem capable of existence without body but the existence of body without these seems impossible wherefore the majority of speculators and our predecessors considered substance and entity to be body and the other things to be passive properties of this so that also the first principles those of bodies are the first principles of entities subsequent investigators however and they too persons that appeared endowed with more wisdom than these supposed such to be numbers as therefore we have said unless these are substance there is upon the whole no substance in existence nor no entity for the accidents at least in these it would not truly be worthy to call entities but if doubtless this is acknowledged that dimensions and points are substance rather than bodies themselves yet we do not perceive to what sort of bodies these would belong for that they be inherent in things that fall under cognizance of the senses this is impossible in this case then there would not be any substance in existence further however it appears that all these entities are divisions of body one indeed into breadth and another into depth and a third into length but in addition to these things in like manner there is in the solid every kind of figure whatsoever so that if neither mercury is in the stone nor the half of a cube in the cube in such a way as has been defined neither in this case would one surface exist in body for if this would be the case with anything whatsoever it would be with that which would separate the half now there is the same mode of reasoning in the case of a line and a point and a monad wherefore if body especially be substance and if these are substance rather than this and these have no existence nor do certain substances exist there eludes our comprehension what entity is and what is the substance of entities for in addition to the statements that have been made those irrational consequences relating to generation and corruption also take place for indeed substance when not previously existing it comes into existence now or when it which formerly had an existence afterwards ceases to exist the substance i say appears to undergo these affections namely production and corruption but points and lines and surfaces cannot possibly arise or be destroyed though sometimes these have a subsistence and sometimes they have not for when bodies mutually touch or intersect each other at the same time that they touch they become one and at the same time that they intersect they become two so that points lines and surfaces when bodies are compounded together have no subsistence but then have been reduced to corruption but when bodies are divided these rise into existence though previously they had no existence for a point truly that is indivisible is not capable of being divided into two and if they are produced and destroyed they are produced from something but in a similar way is it the case respecting the present time which is contained in duration for neither does this admit of being generated and destroyed but nevertheless invariably seems to be a thing that is different not that it is however any particular substance in like manner also it is evident that it is the case both respecting points and lines and surfaces for the reasoning is the same for all these in like manner are either bounds or divisions chapter six but upon the whole 
would one feel perplexity why also it is necessary to investigate into certain other entities besides sensibles and media for example such as we posit as forms for if it is on this account because mathematical entities indeed differ from those that are here in a certain other respect yet in regard of there being many of them of the same species there is no difference in this wherefore the first principles of these will not be limited in number as neither of all the lines which are here are the first principles limited in number but in species unless one takes the principle of this particular syllable or of this particular voice and the first principles of these will be limited in number in like manner also is it the case with things that are intermediate for there likewise things of the same species are infinite wherefore unless in addition to sensibles and mathematical entities there are certain others such as some call the forms there will not be a substance one in number and species nor will there be certain first principles of entities so many in number but in species if then this is necessary the subsistence of forms on this account is necessary also for even although they who make such assertions do not propound their theories with distinctness yet it is this which they aim at and they must needs affirm this that each of the forms is a certain substance and that not one of them subsists according to accident but doubtless if we posit the existence of the forms and of the first principles as one in number but not in species we have declared the impossibilities which must need come to pass contiguous also to this inquiry is the question whether elements subsist in potentiality or in some other manner for if indeed in some other manner there will be something else that is prior to first principles for potentiality is prior to that cause but it is not necessary that everything that is potential should be disposed in that way but if elements are existent in potentiality it is admissible that none of the entities should have a subsistence for it is possible for that to exist which not as yet has any existence for indeed that which has no existence is being produced but nothing of things that are impotential is produced and these doubts then is it necessary to moot respecting first principles and there remains also the inquiry whether universals exist or as we say singulars for if indeed universals exist they will not be substances for not of those things that are general signify this particular thing but a thing of such a sort but the substance is this particular thing but if it will be possible to exhibit this particular thing and that which thereof may in common be predicated in such a case many animals will socrates himself be and man and animal if each signify this certain particular thing and that which is one if indeed therefore first principles are universal these consequences take place but if they are not universal but are as singulars they will not be objects of scientific knowledge for the sciences are conversant about all things that are universal wherefore will there be different first principles prior to principles namely those that are predicated universally in case there is likely to be a science of them end of chapter six and end of book two recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter one of book three of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter one there is a certain science which makes as the object of its speculation entity as far forth as it is entity and the things which are essentially inherent in this but this is the same with none of those which are called particular sciences for none of the rest of the sciences examines universally concerning entity 
so far forth as it is entity but cutting away a certain portion of it they investigate what is accidental in regard of this as for example the mathematical sciences but whereas we are in search of first principles and the topmost causes it is evident that they must needs be absolutely of a certain nature if therefore they also who investigate the elements of entities were accustomed to investigate these first principles it is necessary likewise that the elements of entity should not have a subsistence according to accident but so far forth as they are entities wherefore also must we ascertain the first causes of entity so far as it is entity chapter two now entity is spoken of in various senses indeed but in reference to one and to one certain nature and not equivocally but in like manner also as everything conducive to health is termed so in reference to health partly indeed in its preserving that state and partly in giving rise to it and partly in being an indication of health and partly in being receptive of it and in like manner as the medicinal is styled so in reference to the art of medicine for indeed a thing is called medicinal partly in reference to its possessing the medicinal power partly in its being by nature adapted for the possession of such and partly in its being the work of the medicinal art and we shall receive the predication of other things in a similar manner with these thus however is entity also spoken of in various ways indeed but every entity in reference to one first cause for some things because they are substances are styled entities but others because they are affections of substance but others because they are a way to substance either as corruptions or privations or qualities or things formative or generative of substance or of those which are spoken of in reference to substance or the negations of any of these or of substance wherefore also the non-entity we pronounce to be non-entity as then there is one science of all things pertaining to health in like manner also is this so in the case of other things for it is the province of one science to speculate concerning not only those things spoken of according to one but also those spoken of in reference to a single nature for these also in a certain manner are spoken of in accordance with one it is evident therefore that it is the province of a single science to speculate concerning entities so far forth as they are entities but in every respect is the science of ontology strictly a science of that which is first or elemental both on which the other things depend and through which they are denominated if then this is substance the philosopher or metaphysician must needs be in possession of the first principles and causes of substances now of every genus there is both one sense of each and one science as for instance grammatical science is one and speculates into all vocal sounds wherefore to speculate into also the number of the species of entity and the species of the species belongs to a science one in kind if therefore entity and unity are the same thing and one nature from the fact of their following each other as first principle and cause yet they are not manifested by a single definition there is however no difference should we even make our suppositions in regard of them after a similar manner nay even rather is it for the advantage of the present inquiry for it is the same thing one man and the entity man and man and not anything different does it make manifest according to a repetition of the expression to say man is and man and one man but it is evident that there is no separation of being either in the case of production or corruption 
but in like manner also is it the case with unity wherefore it is manifest that addition in these implies the same thing and that nothing different is unity from entity and further the substance of each thing is one not according to accident and in like manner also is it the case with any entity whatsoever therefore as numerous as are the species of unity so numerous also are those of entity into the nature of which it is the province of the same science in kind to investigate now i speak for instance of sameness and similarity and of the other things of this sort and of those that are in opposition to these and almost all contraries are reduced to this first principle these points however have formed the subject matter of our inquiries in our treatise styled quote, a selection of contraries close quote. and so many portions of philosophy are there as there are at least substances wherefore is it necessary that there should be a certain first philosophy and one next in order belonging to these for unity and entity are things straightway involving genera wherefore also the sciences will follow upon these for the philosopher or metaphysician is as one that is styled a mathematician for his science also has parts and there is a certain first and second science and another next in order in mathematics but whereas it is the province of one science to investigate things that are in opposition and since plurality is opposed to unity it is also the province of one science to speculate into negation and privation on account of both kinds of inquiry being possible in the case of unity of which there is the negation or the privation either absolutely affirmed that such does not reside therein or in a certain genus thereof in this case indeed therefore the difference is present in unity with the exception of that which is inherent in negation for negation is the absence of that and in privation also is there a certain subject nature of which the privation is predicated now plurality is opposed to unity wherefore also the things that are in opposition to those that have been mentioned namely both diversity and dissimilarity and inequality and as many other qualities as are denominated either according to the same or according to plurality and unity it is the province of the science of metaphysics that we have alluded to to examine into among the number of which also a certain one is contrariety for contrariety is a certain difference but difference is diversity wherefore since unity is spoken of in various ways these also shall in many ways be spoken of but nevertheless it is the province of one science to make known all such for even though unity be spoken of in many ways on that account it is not the province of a different science to investigate them if however neither the definitions are capable of being reduced in accordance with one nor in reference to one then is it the province of a different science but since all such are referred to what is first as for example as many things as are styled one are spoken of in reference to the first one in the same manner may the assertion be made that this science is concerning sameness and diversity and the rest of the contraries wherefore in dividing how many modes each is expressed by in this way must reference be made to what is first or original in each category in order to ascertain how it is expressed in reference to that for things will be denominated partly by reason of having those primaries and partly that they are causes of them and partly according to other such modes therefore is it evident as has been stated in the doubts that it is the province of one science to institute an inquiry concerning these and concerning substance but this was one of those inquiries that have been mentioned in the doubts 
and it is the part of the philosopher to be able to speculate about all the foregoing subjects of inquiry for if it be not the province of the philosopher who shall there be that will be likely to examine whether he be the same person socrates and socrates sitting or whether one be contrary to one or what a contrary is or in how many ways it is denominated in like manner also is it in the case of the rest of such points for investigation since therefore these of themselves are affections of unity so far forth as it is unity and of entity so far forth as it is entity but not so far forth as they are numbers or lines or fire it is evident that it is the province of that science of ontology to make known both what these are and the accidents that are inherent in them and not in this respect do they err who examine concerning these as not philosophizing but because substance about which they understand nothing is a thing prior in existence since as there are peculiar affections of number as far as it is number for instance oddness evenness commensurability equality excess defect and as these both absolutely and relatively to one another are inherent in numbers and since in a similar way there are other peculiar qualities in what is solid and incapable of motion and in what is being moved both that which is without weight and that which has weight so also in entity so far forth as it is entity are there certain peculiar properties and these are they about the truth of which it is the province of the philosopher or ontologist to inquire now a proof of this is the following for dialecticians and sophists assume indeed the same figure as the philosopher for sophistical is only apparent wisdom and dialecticians dispute about all things to all however is entity common but they dispute concerning these evidently from the cause of these being proper subjects of inquiry for philosophy for indeed sophistry and dialectics are employed about the same genus as philosophy is but philosophy differs from the one in the mode of power and from the other in the choice of life and again dialectic science is merely tentative of the knowledge of those things that philosophy has already actually reached but sophistic science is only apparent and not real and the same is further proved from the fact that a different co-ordination of contraries is privation and all things are referred to entity and non-entity and to unity and plurality as for instance rest in its nature partakes of unity and motion of plurality but that entities and substance are compounded of contraries almost all men acknowledge all at least assert the first principles to be contraries according to some indeed these principles being odd and even and according to others hot and cold and according to others finite and infinite and others harmony and discord but all the rest of such are referred apparently to unity and plurality for let this reduction be received by us as is done in the first book of our work quote, concerning the good close quote. now there it appears that first principles both altogether and as is acknowledged by others fall under these genera from these statements therefore is it also evident that to investigate entity so far forth as it is entity is the province of one science for all things are either contraries or composed from contraries but the first principles also of contraries are unity and plurality and these are belonging to the department of one science whether the predication be made according to one or not as perhaps the truth is but nevertheless even though unity be spoken of in many ways to the first will the rest be reduced and the contraries in like manner 
and for this reason even though entity and unity be not universal and the same in the case of all things or separable as perhaps they are not yet some things no doubt are referred to unity but others to that next in order and for this reason it is not the business of the geometer to investigate into what the contrary is or the perfect or unity or entity or identity or diversity save only from hypothesis that therefore it is the province of one science to investigate entity so far forth as it is entity and the things therein existing so far forth as they constitute entity is evident and that the same science is speculative not only of substances but also of things that are inherent in substances and of the particulars enumerated both concerning priority and subsequence and genus and species and whole and part and the rest of each this is evident also chapter three but we must determine whether it is the province of one science or a different one to speculate concerning axioms as they are called in mathematics and concerning substance doubtless it is manifest that it is belonging to one and that the science of the philosopher and the investigation of such inquirer is respecting these for in all entities are they inherent but not in any genus separate distinctly from the rest and all investigators employ them indeed because they belong to entity so far forth as it is entity each genus however constitutes entity and thus far do they employ them as is sufficient for their purpose but that is as far as they comprise the genus about which they bring forward their demonstrations wherefore since it is evident that they are inherent in all things as far as they are entities for this is held by these in common the speculation of them belongs to the philosopher whose business it is to make known the truth concerning entity so far forth as it is entity and concerning these therefore no one of those who are partial inquirers attempts to say aught concerning these whether they are true or not neither for instance the geometer nor the arithmetician some of the natural philosophers however in doing so act reasonably for they alone are accustomed to think that it is their province to examine concerning the whole of nature and concerning entity but since there is something of a higher order than the physical for nature is merely one certain genus of entity the investigation in regard of these should belong to the universal and to that which is speculative of the first substance now i admit there is a certain wisdom namely even the physical but it is not the first as many things however as certain of those who speak concerning the truth of axioms attempt to lay down in what way they ought to be admitted they do this from ignorance of analytics for they ought to approach such a subject who are instructed therein beforehand but whilst hearers they should not be investigators that therefore it is the part of the philosopher and of the inquirer concerning substance in its entirety so far forth as it is such by nature to examine also in regard of syllogistic principles is evident but it is becoming that one especially furnishing information about each genus should be competent to speak of the very surest principles of the thing and therefore the same holds true of a person that is engaged in the investigation of entities so far forth as they are entities i mean that he should be able to adduce the most firm principles of all now this is the philosopher and the most firm first principle of all is that concerning which there can be no possibility of deception for such must needs be that which is most known for those points respecting which men do not impart knowledge are all exposed to deception in and it must needs likewise be a thing independent of hypothesis for a principle which one must be in possession of who understands any entity whatsoever this is not an hypothesis 
but what one must make known in the manifestation of anything whatsoever he must also needs come forward furnished with this that therefore indeed such is the most firm first principle of all is evident now what this principle is we shall after this declare for the same thing to be present and not be present at the same time in the same subject and according to the same is impossible and whatsoever things we have further defined let these be so defined in respect of their logical difficulties this however is the most firm of all first principles for it involves the distinction spoken of above for it is impossible to suppose that anything whatsoever is the same and is not the same as certain think that heraclitus asserts for it is not necessary as far as concerns what one asserts to exist to suppose that these also do exist but if it is not admissible that contraries at the same time should subsist in the same subject now the usual definitions have been additionally made by us to this proposition and if an opinion contrary to an opinion be that of contradiction it is evident that it is impossible for the same inquirer to suppose that at the same time the same thing should be and not be for one labouring under deception in regard of this would entertain contrary opinions at the same time wherefore all who employ demonstration reduce the matter to this last opinion for by nature this also is the first principle of all the rest of the axioms end of chapter three recording in memory of mitchell edwards chapter four of book three of metaphysics by aristotle translated by john mcmahon this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter four now there are certain philosophers who as we have intimated themselves both affirm that it is possible that the same thing may and may not be and that they really think so this principle however do many of the investigators of nature employ but we just now have assumed it as a thing impossible in the case of an entity that it should be and not be at the same time and by means of this have we demonstrated that this is the most firm of all principles now some also demand a demonstration of this from ignorance for it is ignorance the not knowing what things one ought to seek a demonstration of and of what things he ought not for indeed upon the whole it is impossible that there should be a demonstration of all things for one would go on in this case to infinity so that there would not be any demonstration at all in this way if however there be some things of which we should not seek a demonstration what they in preference require such a first principle to be they have not the ability to affirm but it is possible to demonstrate concerning this by refutation that it is impossible if only he would affirm anything who doubts but if he makes no assertion it would be ridiculous the seeking an argument against him who had not a reason to put forward about anything so far as he had no such reason for an adversary of this sort as far now as he is such would be like unto a plant now i say demonstration by refutation differs from demonstration simply or properly so called because he that employs demonstration would seem to require what is the principle in the beginning but on the supposition of the existence of another cause of such a kind it would be a refutation and not a demonstration now a commencement of a discussion in regard of all such points is not the demanding the declaration that either a thing exists or doth not exist for this one would imagine perhaps was the asking the principle assumed originally but the demanding the signification at least of a thing both as for oneself and for another for this also amounts to a necessity if he is to say anything at all 
for if he does not there would be no possibility of a rational discussion with such a one neither for himself relatively to himself nor to another if any one however would grant this there will be a demonstration in existence for now will there actually be in existence something that has been determined but the cause is not the person demonstrating but the person sustaining the argument for by overturning the discussion he yet sustains the discussion and further he that acquiesces in this hath acquiesced in the truth of something independent of demonstration so that not everything would be so and not so in the first place indeed therefore it is evident that this very assertion is true because the name signifies the existence or the non-existence of this particular thing so that not everything would be so and not so in this particular way further if man signifies one thing let this be a two-footed animal now i say that this signifies one thing if this be man whatever is a man this namely the being a two-footed animal is the being in man but there is no difference should any one assert that more is thereby signified provided only they have been reduced under proper definitions for grant that upon each definition a different name may have been imposed now i say for example if he would not assert that man signifies one but many things of one of which there is a single definition namely two-footed animal yet also are there many others but defined according to number for its own proper denomination might be set down according to each of the definitions but if its proper denomination should not be thus set down but one would say that such signified an infinity of things it is palpable that there would not be a definition of it at all for the signifying not any one thing is the signifying nothing and when the denominations are devoid of meaning there is an end to mutual discussion and also in reality to discussion on the part of a man with himself for it is not possible that a person should understand anything that is not capable of understanding one thing but if it were possible one name would be imposed on this thing let it doubtless be granted as has been stated in the commencement that a name significant of something be significant of one thing also it is not therefore possible that being in man signifies the same particular thing as the not being in man if man is significant not merely of what is predicated of one but even one thing itself for this we do not require that the one should signify that which is predicated of one since if the case stands in this way at least the musical and the white and the man would signify one thing so that all things would be one for they would be synonymous and it will not be possible that the same thing be and not be save by equivocation just as if we would call any one a man whom others would call a not man the subject of doubt however is not this if it is possible that the same thing at the same time should be and not be the man nominally but really but if the name man and the name not man do not signify anything different it is evident that the not being man will not differ from the being man wherefore the being man will be the not being man for they will be one thing for this signifies that they are one as a tunic and a cloak if there is one definition of each and if they shall be one the being man and the not being man signify one thing but it has been demonstrated that they signify a different thing there is a necessity therefore of this consequence if there be a particle of truth in the assertion that man in signification is equipollent with the being a two-footed animal for this was what the expression man was assumed to signify now if there exists a necessity that this be the case it is not possible for this very thing not to be a two-footed animal then for this doth the phrase quote, the being a necessity close quote, signify namely the impossibility of its not being man accordingly it is not possible to be true to say at the same time that the same thing is both a man and is not a man 
but there prevails the same mode of reasoning in the case of the not being man also for the being of a man and the not being of a man signify a different thing if truly both the being white and the being man are different for much more is their opposition in this case to justify the difference of signification but if also one would say that the white signifies one and the same thing with the being man again will we make the same assertion as has been declared on a former occasion namely that all things will be one and not merely things in opposition but if this be not possible that which has been declared will happen if the question asked be answered if however when a simple question is put one subjoin negations also the question actually put is not replied to for nothing hinders the same thing being both man and white and other things ten thousand in multitude but nevertheless if the question be asked if it is true to affirm man to be this or not to be so the reply should be that it signifies one thing and no addition should be made that it is both white and large for also it is impossible to go through accidents when at least they are infinite either therefore let one go through all or none in like manner therefore if also ten thousand times over they are the same thing namely man and not man the reply to the question if man is should not be that at the same time also not man is unless the reply likewise states in addition the rest of whatsoever things are accidents as many as are so and as many as are not if this however be not done by the person asked the question there is nothing under discussion at all but in general they who make this assertion overturn substance and essence or the formal cause and very nature of a thing for they must themselves needs affirm all things to be accidents and that the essence of man or animal whatsoever it be has no existence for if there will exist the essential nature of anything whatsoever such as is that which is to be man this will not be to be not man or not to be man although these are negations of this for it was one thing which it signified and this was the substance of a certain thing but the signification of the substance of a thing is that not anything else is the being of that thing but if the being whatsoever man is will be found in this being either whatsoever is not man or whatsoever not is man is a thing impossible for it will be a something different wherefore it will be necessary for them to say that a formal and substantial definition of this kind and one invariably suited unto the subject will be one of a non-entity but all things as we have supposed are according to accident for in this lies the distinction between substance and accident for the white is an accident in man because he is white but not anything whatsoever that is white but if all things are spoken of according to accident there will be no primary universal if an accident always signifies a predication about a certain subject there is a necessity then of going on in a progression to infinity but this is impossible for more than two of such are not connected together for accident is not a thing that is accidental to that which is an accident unless that both are accidental in the same subject now i say this for example in the instance of the white being musical and the latter being white because both are accidents in man but not on this account is socrates musical because it happens that both are accidents in a certain other subject since accidents therefore are spoken of some in this way and some in that as many as are so expressed as the white in socrates it is not possible should be infinite in an ascending series of productions in the case of man as for example that in socrates the white there should be some other different accident for any one thing is not produced from all nor truly in the white will be found any different accident as for instance the musical for also in no wise rather is this an accident in that than that in this 
and at the same time the distinction has been made that some things are accidents after this manner but others as the musical in socrates but as to as many things as are accidental in this way such are accidents not in such a way as an accident in what is accidental but this is the case with whatsoever is accidental in that other way wherefore all things will not be spoken of according to accident something then will there be significant also as of substance and if this be so it has been demonstrated that it is impossible that at the same time contradictions should be predicated of the same subject further if all contradictions are true at the same time concerning the same thing it is manifest that all things will be one for the same thing will it be both a trireme and a wall and a man if it is possible to affirm or deny anything of everything as there is a necessity for those to do who assert the opinion of protagoras for if also to any one a man seems not to be a trireme it is evident that he will not be a trireme wherefore also he is if the contradiction be true and doubtless comes to pass a saying of anaxagoras quote, at the same time subsist together all things close quote, so that in reality nothing is one the indefinite therefore they seem to speak of and thinking that they mention entity they talk about non-entity for an entity in capacity and not in actuality constitutes the indefinite but doubtless must we say to the authors of this hypothesis that of everything either an affirmation or a negation must be predicated for it would be absurd if in each thing there will be inherent the negation of itself but that the negation of what is different and which is not inherent therein will have no existence now i say for example if it is true to assert of a man that he is not a man it is manifest also that he is not a trireme if indeed therefore there is truth in the affirmation there is a necessity that also there be truth in the negation but if there is not truth in the affirmation the negation at least of a trireme will more appertain to him than the negation of himself if therefore that also be true there will also be truth in the negation of the trireme and if in the negation of this in the affirmation also and these consequences happen to those who make such a statement even to the effect that it is not necessary to employ either affirmation or negation for if it is true that the same individual is man and not man it is evident that such a one will be neither man nor not man for of those two qualities there are two negations but if that is one which is composed of both this one would also be in opposition further indeed respecting all things it is so and a thing will be white and not white and entity and non-entity and it will be so respecting the rest of the assertions and negations in a similar manner or this will not be the case but only so regarding some and not regarding others and if doubtless it were not so respecting all these would be indisputable but if it be true concerning all again no doubt in the case of whatsoever there is an assertion there will also be a negation and in the case of whatsoever there is a negation there will likewise be an assertion or in the case of whatsoever there is an assertion there will also be a negation or of whatsoever indeed there is an assertion there is also a negation but of whatsoever things there is a negation of all such there will not be an assertion and if this be so there would be something indubitably a non-entity and this will be a firm opinion and if to be a non-entity be something both firm and known more firm would be the opposite assertion and if in like manner also it is necessary that in the case of whatsoever things one employs a negation he should employ an affirmation also it would be true undoubtedly by dividing to say either that a thing for instance is white and again that it is not white or that this would not be true and if indeed it is not true by dividing to say so he does not affirm these things and there is nothing in existence 
but how can one speak of non-entities or understand anything respecting them or thus move forward in the paths of knowledge and all things would be one as it has been said heretofore and both man and god and trireme and the contradictions of them will be the same but if in like manner this be so in the case of each thing in no wise will one thing differ from another for if there will be a difference this will be true and a peculiarity of this in like manner also if it is possible that he who makes the division should speak the truth there happens that which has been declared and to this reason we may subjoin the following that all would speak the truth and all would speak falsely and one would acknowledge himself to be speaking what is false at the same time however it is evident that the investigation with such a person is concerning nothing for he affirms nothing for neither in this manner nor in that is the assertion made with such a one but in this manner and not in this manner and again at least with respect to these points he makes a negation of both because the assertion is made that they are neither so in this manner nor not in this manner but both in this manner and not in this manner for if this were not the case there would now be in existence something that has been defined further if when an assertion be true the negation be false and if when the latter itself be true the affirmation be false it would not be possible at the same time to assert and deny the same thing with truth but perhaps persons will say that this is what has been laid down from the commencement further does one who supposes that in a manner a thing either is so and so or that it is not so labour under a misapprehension but he who thinks that it is both does he speak truth or can he verify his assertion for if he affirms truth what is the assertion save that such is the nature of entities and if he does not affirm the truth but rather he speaks truth who makes a supposition in that way entities in such a case would in a certain manner be now disposed thus and would this be true and not so at the same time and yet in reality not true but if in like manner all both speak falsehood and speak truth it is not possible for such either to utter or to declare anything for at the same time he says the same things and not the same things but if he makes no supposition but in the same way thinks and does not think in what way will he be disposed differently from plants whence also it is especially manifest that no one either of the rest of the sceptics or of those making this statement is so affected for why may i ask does he walk towards megara but not remain still thinking that he is actually walking nor straightway at dawn does he proceed to a well or a precipice if he may chance to meet with such he however appears cautious as not considering the falling into it to be not good and to be good in the same sense it is evident accordingly that the one he considers preferable but the other as not preferable and if this be the case both the one he must needs consider a man and the other not a man and the one thing sweet and the other not sweet for not as of equal importance doth he investigate and regard all things inasmuch as he thinks it better to drink water and to visit a certain person and then seeks in point of fact for those very things although he ought to seek for all things with equal zest if in like manner it were the same thing i mean to say both man and not man but as has been declared there is no one who does not appear cautious in regard of the one set of things and not so in regard of the other wherefore as it appears all men suppose that the case is absolutely so if not concerning all things at least concerning what is better and worse now if they do so not from scientific knowledge but from opinion much more must attention be paid to truth just as also the health of one that is diseased must be looked after more than that of a person that is sound for he that indulges in theory or surmise compared with one possessed of scientific knowledge is not healthfully disposed towards truth further although as much as possible all things should especially be so and not so 
yet at any rate the more and the less are inherent in the nature of entities for one would not say that two and three were similarly even nor does a person in the same manner assert an untruth who thinks four five as he who thinks it a thousand if therefore he be not deceived in the same manner it is evident that the other is less deceived in this way so that he affirms what is more true if therefore that which is more true be more immediate to the truth there would be something true at least to which what is more contiguous will be more true and even if nothing should be true yet now at any rate is there something that is more firm and more true than another and so in this way would we be liberated from that intemperate theory alluded to and one which forbids the definition of anything mentally end of chapter four recording in memory of mitchell edwards